Bora pool all day for a role which attacked it never comes. And what was Avenapool thinking letting his teammates will go in this corner? This was, I think, one of the most interesting profiles of this Paranese edition. 3,500 metres climbing comprised of about nine medium mountain climbs with some pinches in there. Beaujolais region, so not high mountains, but a 3K, 7.5% finish. Great for someone like Schielmoser, normally this is sort of where Roglic has dominated in the past, uh, and Remco himself and his team are not too shabby on this sort of stage either. A day for UAE to defend with the yellow jersey and multiple guys up there on GC. Breakaway, there was no coverage for ages, so the photos tell a story. Lotto, Kofidis, EF, Movistar, Antomarche were the ones that wanted to get in the break. Eventually, Total and Astana got in there too, but Bora were on a mission, pacing hard all day, it seemed, with Jungles, Haller, and Dens probably before coverage started. And here's one of the, the first climb of Mont Bruy. They do it and they finish on this climb. Remco, sort of mid-pack, chilling, Almeida cutting, you know, usually mid-pack as well or a little bit deeper on the left. So they seem to not think too much would kick off on this climb. And Boro really chasing Scaroni, who was the last survivor of the breakaway. He was good in Trofeo Laguelia. He's a really, really good Italian rider. Uh, but Boro really, really chasing him, which, I don't know, it seemed like they were making the race hard more than just chasing because they're going to catch him on the descent. Jungles just rips it apart. Uh, he and Sobrero are good descenders. And there's a split. We've got a bonus second uphill split sprint beforehand maybe they were trying to split it uh for that sprint also Roglic was entering good position now we're thinking this is a big group and a decent gap got McNulty here so UAE are pretty well covered although Almeida is actually behind Eganito is in group one Gadu's in group one Jorgensen's in group one uh, so most of the GC guys are there, except Felix Gull. We can infer from Decathlon Agitas out chasing and Stora for Tudor. Almeida uh, and Plapp also missed it. But what was Roglic cooking up? Was an attack coming as those two groups came back together at the base of the little 1,500-meter kicker? Vlasov doing the lead-out for Roglic, but Remko Evenepoel comes out of his wheel and, and duffs him easily. And he was out of position, Remco, in the bony sprint on stage one. Jorg was in good position. But unlike that stage where Remco wanted to go on with it, today he had no interest in the group going clear, despite him being ahead on GC in this group of four, Jorgensen pulling, and all the UAE teammates behind out of who are ahead of all of these guys on GC. So it was kind of strange. On stage one, so keen, and then today, not keen. They're all looking behind. I, I understand there's domestiques chasing behind, and that was probably the, the right thing to do is to sit up because Gross Schardner and Turner will chase you down. But maybe you saw a tell from Roglic. Plap comes back. He's just been <laughs> chilling mid-pack, back of the pack. But maybe you saw something because on the Col du Fou d'Avana, he gets his team to come over the top of... Uh, Nils Pollard, he's got Catania here. They don't want to let UAE just dictate a moderate tempo. They want to up the tempo with Catania and Vivaca. So I'm thinking like one day Remco, this is the sort of climb far from the, or not, not even that far from the finish for him where he's going to go. 25 k's to go. One of the strangest things I've seen this year. Plap enters the corner next to Catania. Where the climb's about to kick up. Three k's to go on this climb. The longest climb of the day. Vivaca and Remco right there. Good position. Get through the corner, Vivaka kicks out of the corner, and Remco just lets his wheel go. And then there's Plap right there next to him. And Plap's leading GC out of anyone not on UAE Team Emirates. And Remco lets his wheel go, Plap's wheel go. Catania isn't strong enough to close it or just lets the gap open. They go up the road. No one from Quick Steps on the radio saying, hey, Louis, uh, actually, you're leading out the wrong guy. You're leading out a guy ahead of Remco and everybody else except UAE on GC. And UAE don't buy it. They're like, this ain't our problem. You're the stage favorite, probably the overall race favorite. You just let his wheel go and your teammates will go. Your teammates pulling Plap up this hill and then Trek starts chasing, and Platt realizes and commits to it. So he goes off after Vivaka stops, and it levels off here for a little bit. And he really gets a nice gap here. goes from 5 to 10 seconds to 17 seconds before Sobrero, who's looking pretty ragged. He starts pulling a group with pretty much all the GC contenders. Godou hit. Note, he's the only one just about with a jacket flapping or a jacket on at all. He proceeds to try and take that off. 1k to the summit. I don't know. Just loses balance uphill. Chops APP and poor Felix Gull. Plaps in his own world. 
just chilling out ahead of the chaos, cuts back to Gadu, doesn't show Santi bridging across to him. And this is what I thought would happen. I thought it would kick off on this climb with so many people losing time in the TTT with Finn Fisher Black dropping. Santi actually goes and has the cojones. Teams have multiple GC leaders here. Kelderman for Visma, Van Wilder for Quickstep, and Santi goes to Plap, and now Vine does a good job on the descent. He keeps the gap pretty stable. In fact, puts a couple of seconds into it. But then on the flat section before the final rep of Montbrui, Plap's getting the food in. The UAE sit up. They got Ineos with four in the group, and Quickstep are looking at Vine like, what are you doing? Why aren't you chasing? But he's brought the gap down to 13 seconds. Vlasov doesn't know what to do. And suddenly the gap, or the two guys ahead, get a free 10 seconds. You can't even see Santi behind Plap before C-Rod and Ineos with Castro start to pace. But the gap's gone to 30, 32 seconds now. And these two guys ahead aren't just breakaway pack filler. <laughs> Santi's come podium liege Baston liege Plap's a highly touted GC talent. And you're, they got a 40-second advantage at the base of Montbrui, and Plaps ahead of everyone, not on UAE on GC. So perfect situation for him. He sets his tempo. Van Wilder starts to pace on the climb for Remco, and then Santi doesn't take a pull for a bit, then hits Plap on the steepest section. It was always going to happen that with Plap ahead of him on GC, Betrigo would play for the stage a bit more, and you see Van Wilder sit down, playing with his bike computer. It's not exactly in a line behind. And so Santi and Plap have lost almost no time in the first two cases of the climb. Perhaps they've even gained time because everyone's waiting. Everyone's just waiting, letting Van Wilder pull and no one wants to make an early move. Draft's super important on a climb like this. They get to the wooded area. We know Santi's going to win the stage. Finally, an attack from Remco. Even a pull comes. Jorgensen on his wheel. Then Schkelmo's a goal. Goal looks really, really good. Counters over the top. But Santi takes the win with a nice margin to Big win for him, well-deserved for bridging across to Plap and then working with him in the valley. Plap doesn't blow up, 10 seconds behind Santi before Remco goes again for the final sprint to the line. Schelmos are coming over the top of Jorgensen to get into his wheel. Roglic, after his team paced all day, doesn't look good at the finish. In fact, loses a little bit of time to Remco, who actually gets nailed on the line by Schelmos to take those four remaining Bonus seconds, much to his dismay. So I got to say, a very strange stage. I thought there'd be more action on the second to last climb. Credit to Plap, Jaco, and Bahrain, Santi for going for it. And I think Quickstep, Bora, and maybe Visma will be ruining not putting UAE under more pressure on this stage, particularly now with Plap going into the leader's jersey by 13 seconds ahead of Santi and 27 and 29 ahead of the UAE guys. So the UAE guys maintain their GC lead in terms of ranking ahead of everybody. They do lose a bit of time because they weren't the strongest on the climb, but the weather forecast for this weekend is not looking good. There could be stage cancellations, amendments. There's no guarantee that the other GC guys even get the opportunity to put someone of the quality of Santi or Plap under pressure this weekend to take that time back. 